plan is basically starting from, from 18 to 24 months in advance, maybe a little bit longer, of getting your ducks in a row. Number one, figuring out what it is that you want to do kind of after the last dance, I call it, after you've done everything you need to do or you want to do and you've gotten the company to where you feel it's supposed to be, or even if you want to take it to another level and you know that your limitations won't let you, that's when you start planning on bringing in people who are qualified or who are good enough to step into your shoes and take over the day to day or take over certain functions of the business. Um, a lot of times we think of succession planning in terms of the family business, and that is more popular because you always hear about, oh, well, Junior is gonna take over when I retire, or my daughter is gonna inherit this when I decide to, you know, when I give it all up, or if I die, I hate to even throw that in there, but if I die, then this is who I want to run the company after it. When you move one person up, it, feels, it leaves a void. So then you have to go below and move other people up. And then eventually decide to bring somebody from the outside in to fill a gap. So this is why it's important for you to sit down and really map out, we talked about this in, in module two, map out your talent strategy and map out who you need to run your business. Not the person it's themselves, but the type of person that you need. Who do I need for this function? Who do I need for that function? What happens if this person moves up one level? Who moves into that spot? And then how do I that fill what's left open? How am I making sure that every inch of my company is covered? That's what succession planning is. You have to start the conversation soon and early. When you start hiring people, it's always good to start hiring people and really gauging to see if they're there to have a job and a paycheck or if they really truly believe in your company and it's something that they see themselves staying at for the long term. When I hire people, it's with that in mind. You should always be grooming your people. Please write this down, guys. You should always be grooming your people to move up within the ranks within your company. Always. I don't care if it's a receptionist a part-time bookkeeper, a social media intern. I don't care who or what they are because that part-time bookkeeper today, after a couple of years in training and schooling and education and determination and loyalty can ultimately become your finance manager or your CFO. How many times have you heard, look at uh, Jack Welch. Jack Welch started at GE from what, the mailroom? And moved up eventually to chair. So you never know how long somebody's at. Now, we don't live in those times anymore where you come with the company and you're there for 30 years and you've done every single job. Um, I think Rex Tillerson from, from ExxonMobil, same thing, you know, those kind of people. We don't live in that kind of world anymore because there are more and more people who are increasingly unsatisfied with just living and working and getting a paycheck and they want to do what's really in their hearts whether it's moving to a different company or moving up to different roles or even starting their own company. So it's important that you really get to know your candidates as you're talking to them and follow your instinct. And it's hard, you know, you're going to, you're going to have to give up a lot. You're going to have to let go of the, the reins. That means you're going to have to be comfortable with other people making decisions. You're going to have to be comfortable with the person that you chose and make sure that they understand the ramifications of making wrong decisions or impulsive decisions, but you have to be very comfortable that this person can run the shop just as if it's you, just as if you had never left.